Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. I'm not in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That is so it's just so depressing and sad around here. It's um yeah, you know, it was really fun to work remotely and have that time, but it's been really hard getting back into my regular life. Mhm. And I can't believe it was almost 2 weeks ago that we recorded at the beach. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It goes by too fast. I know. No, it was I. It was just a really nice time. Mm-hmm. And I just well. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to take this. It took me a couple of days to recover. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Because we did so much, like, I will talk about my garter squish blanket, but we did all that dyeing, mm-hmm. and I, and then we, we walked eight miles a day, yeah, about, yeah. maybe not quite eight miles a day on the beach, mm-hmm. and you worked a lot. I mean, if anybody, if the state of California says you didn't work, I will vouch for you <laughs> that you worked, um, you worked a lot in grading papers and office hours, and Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were busy. Yeah, so, I mean, I managed. Um, I managed to have. I managed to carve out days where I didn't have as much to do, which was good. Mm-hmm. So it's. Yeah. It, it is. I am privileged to have a schedule that is so flexible. You mm-hmm. know that I can. I can work. I mean, the nice thing about teaching, and even with the pandemic, you know, lots of college professors already mostly worked from home. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, went to class, taught their classes, did their office hours, but did a lot of their work from their home offices. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of rare among my friends that I, I mostly worked at work because Mm -hmm. work's a block and a half away. So, (laughs) you know, but, but yeah, I mean, having that flexibility has always been nice. Like when you would visit, I could be flexible mm -hmm. about, you know, the time I spent at work. So anyway, but it was really fun. And the Mm -hmm. transition has been super rough, Mm -hmm. um, not to be helped at all by the fact that I had three dental appointments in seven days. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, highly don't recommend going 10 years between dentists. When your dentist retires, get on the ball and get a new dentist. Don't. Oh yeah. Don't just Oh, so that's why that's why you had not been yeah, to the dentist. Yeah. Because... My dentist retired. And don't they typically don't they typically when they retire refer you to somebody? Yeah, I mean somebody bought the practice, but it was all the way mm-hmm. in Monterey. So I thought to myself, oh. oh, you know, okay, it was fine going out there to Monterey, but there's plenty of good dentists in Salinas. I'll just find a dentist in Salinas and then, you know, weeks go by, months go by, years go by, and you suddenly realize like, huh. When was the last time I went to the dentist? <laughs> and then, because I have, you know, all the jaw surgery issues and all the things that I had back in the late 90s, and then it's kind of like, oh, God, okay, if I make an appointment, then I have to go through all that history and tell them all the stuff that yeah. already happened. And like, ugh. And so, you know, it just it just didn't happen, and I put it off, and... Anyway, I'm paying the price right now because I'm scrambling to get all my medical and dental stuff done before Robert retires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can have the, you know, the luxury of both of our insurance coverages. Mm -hmm. So it's my own fault. (laughs) I will totally take all the blame. (laughs) But you know what? It's done now, right? Yeah, it's it's done now. I have one more appointment next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then then it'll be totally done. So that'll be good. Yeah. 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 Well, um, uh, the day we came back from the beach that Monday, you headed off to California and then I came back to Seattle 
and Ben had headed up to Bellingham to Western Washington Yay. University to, to start school. This is the last slog of <laughs> finishing. He's been at the community college here in Seattle for, I don't remember now, Kelly, is it four years? Probably Five years? something like that. Yeah. Cause he got the, he did he his high school thing. He did a high school thing. He got the machine certificate. Now he has his associate of arts. Mm -hmm the two-year degree, and he's transferred now to Western. So he started, he left Monday and classes started on Wednesday. So I hadn't seen him at all. And, uh, but he showed up today. Oh, he nice. showed up, um, he got here this afternoon. It, apparently class was canceled. So he came back and is doing laundry and then he's going to get together with a friend. They're going to climb this weekend. So um, I won't see him. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, just briefly. And, and then they leave tomorrow morning. He's leaving it, I think at six in the morning or something to, um, had to climb mm -hmm. and uh and then i'll probably see him sunday and then he's scooting off monday morning back up to bellingham so oh, wow but uh but it's a very empty house yeah the you next know, was, chapter in your life yeah yeah it was sort of an empty house over the summer because he was in and out because he spent a lot of time at index mm -hmm. but um you know it's it's uh um uh, everybody knows i'm not i'm not alone but everybody knows like this is the like he's never coming back to my house to live in my house yeah. the way he did. Right. You know, I mean, and he really hasn't, you know, because he's. Right. It's like been this, kind of a say, gradual transition. It's a, a gradual. While. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and, still. Uh, but I, yeah. So it's like, you know, he'll come home, yeah. but it's never going to be the same. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like in the same, uh, which is how it's supposed to be. But it's also been I, everybody who. um you know, has sent children, raised children and sent them off to college. And they know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a uh, sad and kind of a relief. And honestly, <laughs> the day he started classes, honestly, I thought, I never really thought we'd ever see that. Day. <laughs> you know, you know what I went through. I mean, right. we both went through trying to get him through That's middle right. school and high school. And then we just gave up <laughs> it, it, that junior year. And he, and it was in the most the best thing that ever happened to him going out there to Shoreline Community yeah. College. But, yeah. um, but yeah, I was like, I thought, wow, I never thought I'd see the day that he was starting at a four year school. You Crack know? open a bottle of champagne, Marsha. You did it. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I dye my hair now is because of <laughs> that experience. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? I, I was thinking, I did not, I, anybody who's going through this with their children, like right now they're struggling in school, they will be okay. I can tell you now, I did not know that at the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, we had many conversations about it. I did not know it at the time, but they all end up okay in the end because... And I, and I was thinking, it's kind of, I, I think it's good that he didn't follow the traditional path of... You know, from high school, you go to your four-year school, and then your four-year school, you're dumped out into the world to go make your way. He's He took this circuitous route, um, took breaks, mm -hmm. two trips to Alaska. And I think that is really, um, that makes you act a bit, um, like that prepares you for the world in a practical sense when you ride your motorcycle to Prudhoe Bay mm -hmm. <laughs> by yourself. Yeah. You know, that's a... A very brave thing to do, you know, and, um, but anyway, yeah, I, I think in, in hindsight, looking back, I think that he took the path that he had to, it's the right thing for him mm -hmm. to do, you know, this path, even though at the time you think, oh my God, he's not going to get <laughs> through school ever. Well, congratulations <laughs> to him for this new step. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty exciting. It's very so cool. anyway, well, um, should we talk knitting? I guess we probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, um, do you want to talk your projects or? Sure. I, I don't have a lot. The only thing I've been working on is um, the garter squid. Uh, no, that's yours. I'm reading your notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, gosh. Well, it was a huge part of, it was a huge part of your time when you were with me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um no, my my mind was going elsewhere and my eyes were reading your part of the show notes. Okay. No, <laughs> the only thing I've really been working on is a little bit on the sleeve of my dark green forest. Mm. Um I'm making progress. I'm maybe a third of the way down the second sleeve. So that's good. I got to knit during a meeting on Tuesday and, but I haven't really, I haven't really done a lot with it. And then 
I'm going to mention it. I haven't worked on it, but I have, I have to mention it because I have a deadline coming for Faye's flower blanket. That's the mm-hmm. crochet blanket that I was making using the Persian tile blanket pattern by Jane Crowfoot. And, um, yeah, I have an October 6th deadline. She has a birthday. And I have... October 6th? Yeah, Wait a minute. Next week. What is today? Today's September 30th. 20th. Kelly, got to get going. I know. <laughs> I know. Because what I have to do, and it'll be fast, this part will be fast, is I have some triangles to fill in. You know, there's, mm. I don't know, one, two, three, six or eight triangles plus the corners to put on. So that won't mm-hmm. be bad. But then I have a border to do. Mm-hmm. So again, crochet goes fast. I said this in the last episode, but I need to get, I need to get my act together and mm-hmm. and get this done. So it's one of the things I want to do this weekend. I've I've worked um I've worked to get all my grading done and then I need to sit and crochet all weekend. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because I want to get this done for her birthday. I think mm-hmm. she would really love it. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna strive for, for that. So yeah. That's my goal. Get that yeah blanket finished it's beautiful i really like how it turned out um i've been really happy with it it just got Mm -hmm. it just got kind of hot Mm -hmm. i mean not super hot because you know it's salinas (laughs) yeah well you spent the whole summer complaining i know i know i should have been under that blanket i know Uh, but i i did do a lot during the summer on it and then once i got to the point where i had it all put together i kind of stalled out and started working on my Mm-hmm. My sweater, it got to kind of an exciting part. I, you know, started working on the sweater and kind of forgot about the crochet blanket. So mm-hmm. got to get that back out and get going mm-hmm. yeah. on that. So Faye can have a, a, a nice birthday present. So, mm-hmm. nice. so yeah, that's it. That's all is, my projects. Is that it? One okay. thing I've been working on and one thing I should have been working on but wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so for me, I have to mention, I'm just going to mention the Atlas uh, pullover by Jared Flood that uh, I've talked about forever that I'm making for Mark, and there's no movement on that project. So let's not speak of unpleasant things. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) I haven't even touched it, or, and I, I, yeah, I I can't, and I. And you don't have a deadline. Well, you could have have a a deadline. deadline. Isn't his birthday in November? Oh, it's not going to be. <laughs> no, that's not going to be the deadline. Okay. No, I, um, I, uh, it, let me, here's what I, I, I will talk a little bit about it now that I just said I was not going to talk about it. I, I do want to uh, start doing something with it sooner than later. Mm-hmm. I don't want to wait three years and then lose track of what right. we, t- mm-hmm. we talked about. I made notes and um, I did reach out to mom diggity, mm-hmm. Joanne, and um uh, and now I'm going to reach out to her again to, to, uh, find a time to meet, yeah. to, to go over, you know, like, um, cause maybe she, I, and no, no pressure on Joanne either to, to <laughs> save me. <laughs> Joanne, if you're listening to this, I'm not pressuring you to save me, but, um, anyway, I, but I do kind of want to, I don't want to let it sit too long. Yeah. Well, you it know, would be nice to have someone else's opinion about, yeah, about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um. So anyway, and then the other thing is I've been working on the Nanny Meyer Tea Cozy by Amelia Carlson. And I've you know, I've knit about five inches of the first side mm-hmm. when all of a sudden I thought, how big's that teapot? <laughs> so I called Brian today that I'm making the tea cozy for, and I said to him, Could you measure the teapot, you know, from like the table up to the center of the lid. I need that dimension because what you're, for some reason I had it in my mind that you're supposed to knit five inches. Mm -hmm. What it really, when I went, it's always hopeful to read the pattern. (laughs) When I actually went and read the pattern, (laughs) it says you want to knit till, till it's two inches short of your finished or the size of the Mm -hmm. the, teapot. I mean that, that measurement. measurement. Mm -hmm. So I called him and I said, I don't need your teapot, but if you could just measure that. Because he has a very sort of unusually shaped teapot. It's very oh. kind of wide and short. And like the the lid is just like a, um, 
like a dome kind of. There's no, like a lot of teapots have a little handle on the top. Mm -hmm. His doesn't. It's just flat. So. um, uh, How do you get it off? I don't know. I'm not asking. (laughs) I don't know. You know, it's funny because my mother used to have one like that. Oh. And that, um, and there was no handle on it. Just like the, the lid was like a dome. It was so hot. You had to use a, um pot holder mm-hmm. to get it off because it was too hot and it finally she it was one day she just didn't use it the pot holder and dropped it and broke the lid and then just threw the teapot away because <laughs> <laughs> it really, really was not a it, for her it was not a good design now his might be a different material that doesn't get so hot yeah you know, i don't know what what it's made out of but anyway anyway but um the other thing i just Decided also, I've been using, um, the pattern says you're supposed to use straight needles. And I don't, I, I have just all these old straight needles and I found the size fives that I, that I need, but they're also really long. Mm -hmm. They're more than 12 inches. And I find they're really frustrating to knit with because you're, um, you keep hitting the arms of the chairs. Yeah. So I decided, um, I had to go to a fiber gallery. I have a, still have a gift card there. So I went there to get some knitting needles and also, um, I need to get some more yarn, which I'll talk about in a second. And they they didn't have any. So, or I also decided I wanted metal and not bamboo because yeah. you knit this, even though it's worsted weight, you knit on fives. So smaller, I think it's to make it a dense mm-hmm. fabric to mm-hmm. keep your tea, your tea pot, the tea of the teapot warm. So um, I thought maybe metal would be better because I'm finding my hands are getting kind of tired sli- trying to slide those ne- stitches along oh, the, yeah. the needles now, on the bamboo. You do know you could knit. A flat thing with circular needles. I know, but the pattern said, <laughs> don't use circular, use straight. Huh. Now, I don't know, and, and I, it's actually, it's funny you should say that. I, oh, I, I do know why. I, I know why, because you have, to, you have to tighten it as you go. I to think make that's that corrugation, reason. yeah, yeah, yeah. I sense. think that might be. You wouldn't be the able to get why. the right amount of tension if you didn't have straight needles. Well, I also think that you might tighten it. So if you tightened it too much on the cable, you wouldn't be able to get it back right. up onto the needle, right? right? I, yeah. So I don't know. It just yeah. the pattern said to do it, but but the the woman at at Fiber Gallery said that this, that there's no reason to do it on straight needles. You can use circular. Hmm. Uh, but but you're using you know, straight. Any- I'm using straight because that's what the pattern said, (laughs) Kelly. And I'm a rule follower. (laughs) But I decided I needed shorter ones and I wanted metal. And they don't they don't really sell a lot of straight needles. I think so many people prefer the circular. So um but anyway, what I was gonna say, people who live in Seattle, I did not know this, but the the fiber gallery is in the Greenwood neighborhood on Greenwood Avenue and just north of about a block and the next block north, there's another little store and it's called Seattle Recreative. And basically they sell uh, like leftover craft supplies. So yarn and needles. So I've got a pair oh, of straight needles for a dollar thirty-five. I see a dangerous thing potentially bins happening. Bins of yarn. <laughs> bins and bins and bins of yarn. And they have fabric and paintbrushes oh and God. beads and Okay, I want to go there. Ribbon. Next time I visit, I want to go there. So I put the link in the show notes and then also you can donate to them. And they, I was reading the website uh, this morning and they have a partnership with, um, okay, I'm drawing a blank. It used to be called the, um, the restore and it went out of business and the employees bought it and they renamed it. I don't know. Oh shoot. Now I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it's, it's an architectural salvage place. Okay. And so they partner with them. So uh, that was kind of interesting. Well, you look for it. Well, you look for it while mm-hmm. I keep talking. Yeah, keep talking. So um, anyway, I bought the needle so I can, and then I call, as I say, I called Brian um, uh, today and he was going to measure his teapot and get that to me. Um, are you still looking? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, but they're having a um, recycled arts festival. Yeah, and it looks like they... Oh, that was in 2019. Well, and I was looking at their site, and I, it sounds like they um, um, they uh, used to have classes. Mm-hmm. But I don't think, I mean, probably with the, um, um, yeah. with the pandemic, they're not doing classes. Ballard Reuse, that's what oh, it's called. okay. Ballard Re- Reuse. Um, it's just uh, north of the Ballard Bridge. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, when you come, we'll go and take a look at it because it's uh, it was pretty cute. You know, mm-hmm. they had interesting things there. And um, I think they have them in other cities too. I've heard about them, I believe. I think there mm-hmm. I think there's one up in the or maybe more than one up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I don't mm. think we have anything like that near me mm-hmm. in the Monterey Bay Area. But that's it's possible there is something like it in Santa Cruz. Maybe. So I kind of thought I felt a little bad when I went in there as those two big giant garbage bags of yarn I took to the Goodwill. Mm. I should have taken it to them, but Oh, well. Well, they're not accepting anything right now. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So maybe they have enough mm-hmm. for the time being. Okay. So don't well, feel too bad. Pl- someone had, will get, someone will get your yarn at the Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, somebody will get it. Our listeners will. If anybody wants to know, I took it to the Goodwill on 145th and 15th <laughs> Avenue <laughs> Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> actually though but i don't think it stays in those like i think that where you when you drop it off to the goodwill it doesn't necessarily go to that mm-hmm. store they just have big trucks they mm-hmm. you know i don't know what they do with it all but anyway um so that was just kind of interesting and it kind of fun to check it out um instead of having all the stuff just going into a landfill right. somebody can find a use for it yeah. you know yeah um anyway the other reason i went to the fiber gallery is i wanted to get some uh cascade 220 undyed because the garter squish blanket, which is the next project I wanted to talk about by Stephen West, we did all that dyeing, um, which we've talked about in the last episode. Um, but I was short. So I'm doing the main color, which is the gradient, kind of the terracotta color is the gradient. And then all the contrasting ones, we dyed all of that. Mm-hmm. But I was short about 600 yards. Okay. So I just wanted to get three skeins of Cascade 220 to dye. Mm-hmm. And the fiber gallery doesn't carry Cascade 220 anymore, which I was surprising. Oh. It's because mm. it's such a kind of a good, it's a really good yarn, workhorse mm-hmm. yarn, you know. But uh, so I they suggested that's how I found Seattle Recreative is that they suggested going there for yarn and the needles. Um, and I found the needles, did not find the yarn. They had undyed yarn, but not the right weight. Mm-hmm. Um and then the weight that was correct was acrylic. So that oh, would not yeah, work. That so work. I ended up going over to um, Acorn Street and they have a wall of um, Cascade 220. So I got my three skeins and then I came back and I dyed. Um, what is it say? It was Tuesday night I dyed. So I dyed three more skeins, Kelly. And I have to tell you, like, I kind of went crazy. <laughs> So I had, to, so do you remember I, the contrasting colors? I'm doing long color repeats where we dyed half the skein one color and the other half another color. Mm-hmm. And then the short repeats, repeats, the short repeats, we just painted the dye on. Right. And so I had to do two short repeats and one long repeat. And so the long repeat I did um, uh, sapphire blue okay. and... Um, the one color that we kept avoiding, olive. Oh yeah, and I have to say, maybe they, maybe Jacquard dies, and I have a different idea about what olive is. I always think of olive should be g- more green. Yeah, this is actually more brown. Yeah, it's a and it's I, an odd color. Um, I've dyed with olive in a crock pot, mm-hmm. and I got <laughs> clown wig hair. I mean, it literally broke apart into like yellow, green, red, blue. I mean, it looked like one yeah. of those rainbow clown wigs. The the fiber yeah. it was fiber that I dyed um, huh. with with the um, with the jacquard olive, and I really mm-hmm. I thought it was fun, and I've tried to get it to break like that again, and I can't. Um, but I have it has I have had it break into mm-hmm. like brown and orange. Um, yes, but not I olive used it once. green at all. I yeah, I used it once before, and I never got olive green. I and and actually, where it looks the most olive green is where the blue and the olive green meet. Mm, mm-hmm. Then it has a little bit of because I always think of olive green as well. Now, in their defense, they don't call it olive green; they call it olive. olive. But so, so it could be like the color of, of a Kalamata olive. Well, they're kind of black, aren't they? Or but brown, there, purpley. Well, there there's are some a purpley of those... brown ones, but it's not purpley brown either. Right. Yeah, no, I don't know what olives they're talking about. <laughs> 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 but, 
<laughs> anyway, it's it's nice. I yeah. it's and it's. I was a little worried when I it was in the dye pot. I was a little worried. I, I let it stay in the dye pot until it completely. I, I, I well, it didn't completely exhaust the dye, but I thought it's not going to absorb anymore. Yeah. I've been in there for and three hours. Can you remember what color the water was that didn't absorb? It was sort of the same, a uh, very, very, very pale version of the color that's on the, oh, the yarn. Okay. okay. So it's not like it was one of the colors that didn't attach. Yeah. Okay. You know, it wasn't pink or yeah. black yeah. or something. Um, so I did that one, and then I did another one, and I'll, it's um, um, hot pink, yellow, and black. Ooh. And it's. I'll I'll take I why well, did I send you a picture of it? Yeah, it's I love the colors. I don't know that I and it so it's so interesting when you dye that the colors start blending with each other. So the black in some areas the black is definitely black. Some places it's sort of gray. Some places that like the pink and the gray have moved together, and there's a little bit of white. So that mm-hmm. I'm looking it, at it's it right a soft, now. Pale yeah. pink, kind of you know, and then these very intense. I, I didn't want to have a lot of yellow, but I wanted some bright spots of yellow, which there are. But then they, I don't know, it's like there's these pale oranges in there. Mm-hmm. And then some of the black and the yellow together have made it slightly green. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I, I think it's so fascinating. And some of it, actually, the pink and the black are together that looks almost purple. Yeah. So interesting. And then the last one I did, I think I used pumpkin and navy and what was the other, oh and what was the other color i used i, I think that was it just pumpkin yeah and I, navy. I just see pumpkin and navy in the picture that i'm looking it's at. just pumpkin and but, navy but yeah. not long repeats but short no short ones yeah yeah so anyway that was just i so it, that's like now i should have enough yarn now to finish the blanket nice. and do you remember what i was talking about how i I remember I split each skein into two balls. Mm-hmm. So I have, I'm going to have now a total of 16 colors for the contrasting. Let me look at my notes. You have a total of 16 and I split those in half. So the first, I'm in the middle of the first repeat and I'm, I'm almost done with ball seven. Okay. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I'm on ball three of the main color. So seven of 16. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to do this, do that same thing again. Again. Yeah. Yeah. For the second half. So I, I nice. it's very, very addictive. Well, it's, and it's coming re- out it's, beautiful. I really like how it looks. I think it's beautiful. That I have to say that uh, consistent color. Even though it's a gradient, that consistent mm-hmm. color throughout going with all those variegated, just it just makes magic. Yeah, it and it's so interesting because like I'm really interested to see. So some of them, you remember when we were dyeing them? Some of them, like I, I said to you, I don't know if this is going to look very good. Like we have, um, there was one that was orange and sky blue and orange. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the color was, and they look like. Um, like college colors or something. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, what's that going to look like? It's, I've used it. It's beautiful in there. It's like, it just, it, that main color, even though, as you say, it's a gradient, it sort of tempers everything yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it kind of like, so it's kind of like watercolor. I mean, I don't paint, mm-hmm. but, but it kind of reminds me of watercolor where you just kind of wash something over it and then everything, everything blends and goes together. Yeah. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see um, how the contrasting colors work with the background color as the, the as the, or I should say the main color, as the main color starts getting lighter and lighter yeah. towards the center of the blanket. I don't know where they're all going to fall on this, mm-hmm. but so, but just to say in theory, if I use my six, half of my 16 colors and I get to the middle of the blanket, but I'm not going to reverse those colors. Right. I'm just going to repeat them in the exact same order. So what was at the edge on the really, what I started with on the cast on edge was the darkest of the gradient main color. Mm-hmm. 
now may possibly be on the lightest of the gradient right. in the center. Right. So everything is going to get mixed with whatever it got mixed with the first round. It's going to get mixed with something different, a different shade of the gradient yeah. in the second round. Yeah. Lighter or darker. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, this is a, this is a really fun project. <laughs> <laughs> I I had no idea how much fun this was going to be. It's in some ways it's way more fun than the other one because the other one I, which which was super fun. But once you start a color it's just going to look the same right. for about what those blocks of color like, like 6 inches, to 8, eight inches. inches yeah yeah something like that. This is like they're shorter mm-hmm. so I I mean the longest is maybe oh here's my long one let's see what is this like two, four, six, seven garter ridges. Some Mm. of them are only, one of them is only three garter ridges. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's one that's four. So it's, um, I stay up way too late working (laughs) on this and I wake up way too early to start working on this. (laughs) So it really wasn't me you had to recover from when I left. Oh, no. It was your blanket. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god <laughs> anyway so it's just really really fun i just really am enjoying knitting on it just i'm working on it now and i like i i probably will stay up really late because i have a a two inch ball mm-hmm. and get through that tonight yeah and start another color yeah you want to get to the next color mm-hmm. yeah see my my sweater is not at that stage it's just the same stuff over and over and yeah, and it's the same color the whole way through, and yeah. And the blanket so, was very, I, the, the crochet blanket was very addictive when I first mm-hmm. you know, was doing the squares and stuff. Not so addictive right now, but but yeah, I'll have to find myself another addictive project like that. And that sounds like a lot of fun. Well, and I, I think it was so interesting, just the, our whole discussion, too, about this, about the planning for it and the mm-hmm. the math and the weighing and the scanning and the percentages and the everything that we were doing and then um we were pretty controlled too and thoughtful about like uh painting well we were maybe not quite so cold controlled painting the colors the short repeats but the long repeats we were very thoughtful about what colors to put together yeah, yeah. um as we when we dyed the two long repeats yeah but not so, so cold- much that i think I, I don't know how to say this. I, I, I don't want anyone who's listening to get the idea that that so much thought and planning went into it that you if you didn't have the same thought process that we did, that it wouldn't still turn out really nice. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that, I too. I think it was- we had fun doing that planning, but mm-hmm. it probably would have turned out to be just as fun and addictive and pretty without that. It made it more interesting. Right, like, mm-hmm. It made it more. Yeah. How are these long repeats going to look, and how are these short repeats going to look, and what about these color combinations? That made it more mm-hmm. interesting to do the planning. Mm-hmm. But I have this feeling that with that base color, you could probably have like thrown any old stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I don't think you need. Uh, well, and when I say I don't think that we were uh, super scientific about it, we yeah, but we had yeah. discussions, kind of yeah. like. Well, okay, if I'm going to use blue, what would, or like the yellow, what would be a good contrast mm-hmm, color with the mm-hmm. yellow? It's something that, you know, that, and we were trying to use all the dyes. Right. And then, and, and, uh, but I think, I think you're right. You could just throw dye on and it would, <laughs> it would be fine. I, I just, I think the, the premise of that garter squish blanket, having that mm-hmm. one solid color that continues through. And for yours, it's a gradient. It's not, it's not. Mm-hmm you know, the same shade of the color, but it's the same color. It's just different shades Mm -hmm. all the way through. But I think that's just really, I think that maybe is really the magic of it, you know, Mm -hmm. but I have to say this one is more interesting than your other one because of the variegation. Yeah. And I also like, it would be pretty if it was just all just the same kind of variegation. Mm Mm-hmm. But I like in your the pictures that you sent me the difference between the truly variegated and then the skein that's one half one color, one half another mm-hmm. color. 
yeah. there's an interesting that's an interesting combination. It would be pretty yeah. to to do either one of them as the only thing you did. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting to have them both together in the same blanket. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I think it's... Um, you guys will all have to go look at the pictures to see what we're talking about because it really mm-hmm. is cool. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, um, and I, and I, not to, to, disca- to, you know, denigrate the one, the first one I did, cause I love that one too. And it's, but it just, to your point, because you have the consistent main color, mm-hmm. it sort of, um, uh, blends, softens, mm-hmm. makes interesting all the different colors. So the other one I did, the main color was a blue, um, kind of a, Mm-hmm. I don't know what color. Kind blue. of between Denimble? royal and navy. Yeah. Not quite navy, but also not mm-hmm. as bright as royal blue. Yeah. And it, it had, and then in those colors, I use like a, a hot pink and kind of a peach color and burgundy and mm-hmm. gold. And there was a green, a couple of different green greens, I think. A couple of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, uh, really interesting how it all then just goes together and it's a fantastic way to use up spirit yarn yeah (laughs) fantastic so really the only money i spent on this really was um well i did buy some of the yarn at the goodwill some i got from the d stash room and then i spent thirty dollars on three skeins of the cascade 220 that i had to buy to finish it Mm -hmm. but um yeah yeah that's probably the only full price yarn you full price you paid mm-hmm. was what mm-hmm. you what you just got to finish it up. Mm-hmm. No, very cool. I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out when it's all the way done. Um, yeah. I'm also interested to see if it stays if it stays your addiction all the way through to the end, or if it kind of becomes <laughs> a slog at some point. Not to well, jinx you or anything. I'm just curious. Well, I, I kind of think it will be continue to be a bit of an addiction only because, as I said before, I'm the gradient goes from light yeah. or excuse me, from dark to light and then light to dark. But the contrasting colors are going to repeat in the same order. Yeah. So I'm going to end up having. The second it, half will we'll be see. different from the first half. It won't just be the yeah. first half repeated backwards. But I, I think the thing that will slow me down is that I, it's going to be difficult to take with me everywhere. That's true. Because it's so yeah. big. <laughs> it, yeah, that's the problem you had with the other one, too. Once it gets mm-hmm. to a particular size, it becomes uh, not very portable. Of course, you're, yeah. not going, you're not going that many places. Yeah. No, I don't, go, I don't really go anywhere. <laughs> so Anyway. So I think I've said enough about the garter squish blanket. <laughs> Just, but I would say, given the opportunity, if you have a bunch of yarn that you want yeah. to use up, make this afghan because it really has been fun. Free pattern um, by Stephen West. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and just look at some of the other patterns, or excuse me, uh, projects that are on Ravelry. Uh, uh, people have made beautiful blankets. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of it is just, most of them are leftovers. That's what people are doing. That's that's the idea behind it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we are uh, done talking about projects, but there are a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about, Marsha. Um, yes. The Winter Weave Along, for anyone who hasn't already joined us, it's going to start October 15th and it's going to go all the way through the end of March. So it truly goes all winter plus a little bit on both mm-hmm. ends. Mm-hmm. So... So yeah, I'm kind of excited for that. I have a a blanket that I warped a while, a while back that I I thought I actually might have on the loom already, but I haven't put it on the loom yet. So I'm excited to get that on the loom and and, uh, okay. and start weaving. But first, mm-hmm. I need to get that crochet blanket done. <laughs> yeah, really, you can't think about any project. That's right. right. Now. That's right. So only one. That's right. But speaking yeah. of crochet, that's a good segue because I also wanted to announce the launch of a new crochet magazine. Mm-hmm. So um, Allison from Keep Calm and Carry Yarn podcast, she has created, she's part of a group who is creating this new crochet magazine. She had this idea that 
um, crochet needed a magazine that had um, garments, more garments than most crochet magazines mm -hmm. have. And so uh, Murit Magazine is uh, now is now launched. It was a Kickstarter, and I backed the Kickstarter, so I should be getting my first issue of Morit Magazine pretty quickly here. I know they've all been shipped. Um, but the Autumn Winter 2021 is the very first issue of this new magazine launch, and uh, we'll have a link to it in the show notes. But I thought, Marsha, that we should probably have we haven't had a crochet along in a long time and it might be kind of mm -hmm. nice yeah. to uh, have a crochet along in honor of the launch of this new magazine. So congratulations to Allison. I think that's, this is really wonderful that she's mm -hmm. uh, been able to put this, put this together. And I, I recommend their podcast. She and her mom have a really cute podcast called keep calm and carry yarn. Mm -hmm. And I think it's both video <laughs> and audio the audio okay. is in my podcast um, app i think the mm -hmm. video is only on youtube um but anyway they're fun it, it, it's good to um it's fun to to listen to them so she's in scotland allison mm -hmm. is in scotland and then her mom is in somewhere in the northeast i want to say new hampshire but i might be wrong about that one of those mm -hmm. states up yeah. there in the northeast so <laughs> yeah I, i'm noticing on the um oh they're having a launch party i just clicked on something that looked like alcohol and <laughs> a picture <laughs> on their website and they're actually having a virtual launch party although i guess it's probably already passed because it says join us on thursday the 30th of september which is today at 6 30 hmm. bst British Standard BST. Time. Oh, oh, you know what oh! That is. I'm guessing. I, I, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's passed. I hope they had a great party, and they have a signature cocktail. So their signature cocktail is maple syrup, lemon, cinnamon sticks. I'm just looking at what this is. My recipe in a picture, um, and Woodsman. Scotch whiskey, maple syrup, cinnamon sticks, lemon. Hmm. I think there might be a recipe, but I'm not seeing it. I'm just seeing the picture. But it looks interesting. So, cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited to see my um, my issue come in the mail, and I'll I'll uh, I'll talk about it more when it gets here. But there are a couple of shawls and. Um, a sweater with cables. Did you know you could do cables and crochet? I did not know yeah, that. Some some mitts, uh, mittens, kind of a uh, those uh, pointed style mittens. Oh yes, I'm looking at. These. I want to say like Ukrainian or mm -hmm. that. I don't remember where that style comes. Those are from. darling. But anyway, they have lots of very cute patterns. Ha a hat. Yeah. So take a look at all the different patterns. Socks. I've never made crochet socks. That would be hmm. really interesting. I like the vest. So I'm looking forward to getting my issue so I can um, look through it and maybe decide what I want to make. Yeah, the vest looks like kind of like basket weave. Mm -hmm. Very interesting texture. I might. The I mittens might are like darling. Yeah, there's so many cute things in this in this book. Those don't even look like. Uh... They don't even look like crochet. Right. I mean, it looks like it's so interesting. And when I say that, I mean, I it's so interesting. It they look like the little V's of of they. You know what it knitting. You know what it might be that Tunisian crochet. Remember we oh, did that. Oh, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. I have Let's to see. look at the pattern to find out for sure. But they might be Tunisian mm -hmm. crochet. So yeah. Oh, it says well, the split stitch mimics the V of knitted stocking stitch. The resulting fat fabric is much denser. Oh, okay. You can make a cowl or mittens. Very cute. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm thinking that we should have a crochet along. Yes. So um, we'll be starting. I'll put a thread up in our in our uh, Ravelry group as soon as I publish mm -hmm. this episode, and we'll just kind of informally get started at the beginning of October. 
And I don't know, go for a few months. How's that? Yeah. Loosey goosey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up we'll come up with an end date just because it's kind of nice uh-huh. to know what your what your goal is but um but yeah we haven't done a crochet along in a long time and and um i haven't uh, i haven't seen patterns like these it, i don't think no, ever, you can make so. it you can crochet a skirt oh i don't think i would but you could you, and here, <laughs> I, I, I see i see the socks and sweaters. I mean, it's really lovely. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Very interesting patterns. Yeah. I'll be interested to oh, see you, who no. the designers are. I, you know, I'm, I don't know the names of many crochet designers. So we'll mm-hmm. be able to give a little shout out to some of those designers when, we, mm-hmm. when I get my episode and we talk a little bit more about the magazine. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Okay. Magazine and Murit is a color of Shetland sheep. M O O R I T Murit magazine. Okay. And then just one last thing. Um, I've heard from everyone who got a prize from last episode. Um, and our apologies, uh, Susan, who is Canyon Wren. I'm not sure why I was calling you Carolyn the whole time last <laughs> episode. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think I did that. I, it was written yes. in the show notes. It wasn't oh, just, yeah. okay. That's why I did it. I'm, yeah, it was written in the show notes. I'm not sure why I wrote your name in the show mm-hmm. notes as Carolyn, but I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Marsha and I were calling you Carolyn the whole time. Um, so congratulations, Susan. She did contact me and said, I think you met me. Um, <laughs> well, do we have anything else? Any any housekeeping? We'll, we'll draw names uh, next episode for the... Uh, three green sisters. Um, oh, right. I had yeah. it. I had it ending on September thirtieth, which is today. Uh, but I mm-hmm. don't want to close it early if somebody was planning to go in. So mm-hmm. I'll just keep it open for a little while longer. If you haven't gone to the thread, the giveaway thread for the three green sisters, um, go take a look at all the really pretty things that people have said were their favorite bags on her website. Go to the Etsy shop and then. Um, let us know what your favorite is and enter the drawing because we still do have one more bag to give away from three green sisters um, through Mm -hmm. that, through that Ravelry, uh, through that Ravelry thread. Meanwhile, they have a coupon code use two E W E S and the number two 15% off until the end of the year Mm -hmm. and their website. um, Their the link to their website is in our show notes as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Marsha. So I wish I was still in Seattle talking to you across the table <laughs> or actually in Seabrook I, talking to you across the table. Yes. I wish you were too. Um, Cause I, well, and also I eat better when there's somebody to cook for, <laughs> you know, like if I was cooking for you or Ben, but now there's nobody here. So just the dog. <laughs> <laughs> if you so if you start well. cooking dinners for Enzo and setting the table and stuff, mm-hmm. we're all going to worry about you. <laughs> you really? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no. Well, it. Uh, I have. Well, I have my Saturday night so mm-hmm. with my 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 bubble that comes yes. over. So anyway, okay. Um, carry on. Uh, yeah, you too. Get to work. You have to get off the phone so you can start working on that blanket. I know. I need to get crocheting. Okay. I will do it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit twousefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.